Hey families, welcome to another shot at Woodlands Kids at Home. I'm super glad that you are together and that uh, we're going to be walking through this great, big, awesome topic uh, together today. Um, really quickly, before we go further, I'm going to give you an activity in a couple minutes, but in order to do the activity, you're going to need some balls. Um, so send someone in your family out to get some tennis balls or some golf balls or to find some, some collection of that. So if you have like five people in your family, see if you can't find like 12 or 15 tennis balls or golf balls or something like that. Um, if you can't find anything that fits that, it, it's okay. You'll, you'll still be able to do it, but, but send someone out to get those um, right now. As we continue on though, this is kind of week three is we're asking this big question, what is the church? And over the past couple of weeks, we've seen these really cool uh, different truths that the, the church isn't a building or a place. I'm here at the church building. Um, it's not a building or a place, it's, it's a people. It's God's people, it's God's body. It, the, we saw in week one, it's Jesus's body put on earth to do Jesus' work and Jesus' mission of loving other people and reaching other people. And then last week we saw that the church is supported by Jesus. Um, he walks alongside of us. Uh, he, he is faithful to the church, which is just so cool. This week we're asking the big question, who's in the church? Like, what's the church made up of? And so I'm super excited to talk about this uh, together as as a family uh, with you guys. And if you're with us on Tuesday night over at engage.woodlandschurch.org, I wanna say hi to everyone, and my family's doing it with you guys. Say hi in the chat and give us a shout out. Um, okay, so, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give us a moment to pause, uh, like 12 minutes or something like that. And you're gonna actually leave wherever you're watching this video and you're going to go watch another YouTube video and we're gonna learn a new skill together. So uh, we've got this time at home, this quarantine stuff, and so we're gonna learn how to juggle. That's right, uh, we got 12 minutes to learn how to juggle and that's why you need those balls. So um, in just a moment, I'm gonna, gonna have us take a pause and then there's a YouTube video I want you to watch. If you're at engage.woodlandschurch.org, that YouTube link is gonna show up kinda in the chat bar, that's gonna be easy. Otherwise, if you're on YouTube or woodlandschurch.org slash kids, the link's gonna be in the comments or, or right below. So you can find that, watch that, go through that, spend some time as a family becoming juggling experts, 12 minutes, you're not gonna figure it out, but that's okay. Learn a new skill together. All right, go and do that right now. So how did juggling go? Are you guys experts now, expert jugglers? I, I bet you're not. Maybe some people in your family already kind of knew how to juggle, but uh, it's just de definitely a process. And there's so many different kind of steps, even in just the basic three ball juggling to figure it out that um, it's definitely one of those things to work on, but it's a new skill you can learn over quarantine. And, and in just a minute, I'm gonna give you a chance to practice it again. Um, we'll come back to why I'm having you learn how to juggle. Um, in just a second, but our, our topic for today um, is that we are, fancy word, redeemed into the church. And so, so go back with me a couple of weeks, right? We learned that the church is Jesus's body. It's doing Jesus's work here on earth. It's, it's caring for people who are hurting. It's supporting one another. It's, it's doing Jesus's mission. And then last week we saw that, that Jesus supports the church and he builds it up. But that leads us to a really, really big question. It's a really important question. And it's this, who's part of the church? Like when we say the church and we mean a group of people, like who, what decides whether you are or you aren't a part of the church? And, and if you're watching this right now and you're four or you're 14 or you're 40, like are you, at what age do you become part of a church? At what, like, like, at what point does God start working in you and through you and using you for his great rescue mission on the earth? And, and that's where we come. Our point for today is that it's not an age, it's not an ability, it's a status with God. It's that we are redeemed into the church. And so our, our verse for today is Ephesians 2, uh, 19 through, through 22. That, that's the long part of the verse, but that really, really teaches us what we want. So, so let me read this. Let me read this. Starting in verse 19, it says, So then you 
are no longer foreigners and strangers, but your fellow citizens with the saints. That's, that's people of the church. Your fellow citizens with the saints and members of God's household built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. So that's the church is built on Jesus, but in him, the whole building that that's not a physical building. That's the body of Christ being put together, grows into a holy temple of the Lord in him. You are also being built together for God's dwelling in the spirit. And this is talking about this amazing change that takes place in our lives. When we decide to follow Jesus as our Lord and Savior, when we realize that our sins separate us from God and we say, Jesus, I realize that I'm a sinner and I need your death and your resurrection to change me, that makes us part of the church. In that moment, we go from being, what, what does it say here in verse 19? foreigners and strangers, and we become fellow citizens with the saints. We are redeemed into the church. And, and so for those of you listening right now, this is just, this is true. If you have accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, whether you're four or 14 or 40, you are part of the church and you are part of God's rescue mission to save the world. It's pretty crazy. Now, on the flip side, if you're listening and you haven't yet made that decision, you're not part of the church. We're going to talk about a little, a little bit about what that means in just a minute and what that looks like in just a minute. But, but here's, here's what I want you to do. Um, we're going to take a moment to engage. And so um, I want you to go back to juggling uh, as a family and maybe do a juggle off. So we're going to give it like, like 10 minutes or eight minutes or something like that. So in just a minute, we're going to take a pause and you're gonna have a certain amount of time and, and each member of your family gets 30 seconds to juggle. Who can juggle the most, you know, the three balls for the longest? And then whoever is the winner in your family, record them juggling for as long as they can. Put it on Facebook, use the hashtag KC at home. Um, actually, I'm sorry, we're gonna change that to WK, Woodlands Kids at home. Use that hashtag so we can share it and so we can see it. Um, but I want to see the top juggler in your family juggling for as long as they can on Facebook. Um, ready, set, go. <laughs> well, we took a little bit of a tour. Uh, hopefully you had a chance to, to film your all-star juggler uh, post on Facebook or you'll do that later. I'm, I'm excited to see. I am confident when I do this with my family that I will be the all-star juggler because as everyone knows, juggling is part of the requirements to be a children's pastor. Uh, so I am exceptional. I'm not, I'm not that good at all. Um, but hey, so we said it earlier um, and we'll keep saying this, but when we ask who's part of the church, the answer is you're part of the church if you've accepted Jesus. If you've wrestled with this reality called the gospel, that we're separated from God because of our sin, but that Jesus came and he died on the cross and, and he took the punishment that we deserve for our sins on himself, and then he defeated death and sins by raising from the, from the dead. When we say, Jesus, I understand what you did for me, I recognize it, I realize it, I know I need it, and I want to follow you as Lord and Savior of my life. When we say that, we become, the fancy word is redeemed. It means saved, transformed, purchased, bought back, brought into God's kingdom. And we become not just secure for eternity, like we'll spend the rest of our lives with Jesus in heaven, it's gonna be awesome. But we also become part of the church. And so who's part of the church? It's anyone who said yes to Jesus. Now check it out. I'm obviously wearing something different. I'm in this, this is not my normal, right, look and attire, but that's because I'm in the new church building. Take a look around. Uh, what you're looking at right here is going to be the new sanctuary. They're pouring the floors right now. They're putting in the windows out in the foyer. This room, when we're able to gather together again as a church, is going to seat almost 1,200 people on a Sunday morning coming together and, and worshiping and singing and praising God, which is so cool. And when we say church, like we're part of the church, 
we think often about people who are in this room or in this place. But here's the reality about church. I've heard, I've heard this said before. It, it, may, coming to church on a regular basis, like coming into the building, doesn't make you any more a part of a church than standing in a garage makes you a car. Like this is a building. This is a place that we gather together. But coming here and being here doesn't make you part of the church. And ultimately, it doesn't make you part of God's rescue mission to save the world. Here's another way of thinking about it. Um, we've been saying, uh, we've been learning how to juggle recently, and none of us are good jugglers unless you were already a good juggler. But how do you learn how to juggle? Well, you learn how to juggle by learning from someone who knows and then practicing. Like that guy that we've been watching in the video, if we could have him come and teach us how to juggle and work with us every day, we'd become a good juggler. So, so the question then about the church is how do we become a participating member of the church? Like how do we use our gifts and our skills and our abilities in the church? We don't have to be experts at serving at loving God, at reading the Bible, at praying, at doing the right thing. We don't have to be experts to be part of the church. We just have to be gods. And then we have to make the commitment to do life with other people who are maybe not experts, but further down the road. We have to find professional jugglers to have around us in order for us to learn how to juggle. Same way, we have to find experienced Christians people who know Jesus, who, people who are using their gifts and skills and abilities, and we have to find them and, and, and be around them in order to learn how to uh, serve. So, so let me give you an example. I'm gonna show you a video. This is a cool video clip. This is a video of Pastor Steve learning how to do something that he had never done before from someone who's an expert at it, Mr. John Teamy, who both part of Woodlands Church, they're both part of Woodlands Kids. Um, take a look at this video. Okay. So I'm going to put it back in, and you're going to be ready to go here. Okay, so you're going to go all the way up to I'm, the top? I'm not ready to go here. Okay. <laughs> yep. So you're going to go up to this branch that's like 25 feet above you. And then once you get to that branch, you're going to take off these. Your knee ascender, this is your knee ascender, and this is your foot ascender. Okay, so you practice climbing and then bring me back down a little bit. Do I need to do that? As far as to get, the, get the hang of it? Yeah, you're going to go all the way up to the top, lanyard in, and then I'm gonna untie every, your line over here once you land your in, and then you'll be climbing like you just did over on the arbor bike. Okay, but this? This you're just walking foot over foot. <laughs> like, you're, like you're climbing a ladder, little step, little step. <laughs> okay. That was awesome, wasn't it? It was, it was super crazy to watch, and it's super fun to watch someone who knows what they're doing, knows what they're talking about, teach, someone else. Um, and the same, same thing is true for the church. That, that's what the church is. It's a place where people who are following Jesus and, and doing what Jesus is asking them to do are able to teach people who are, who are just learning and who want to know. And, and the thing is, in the church, uh, we don't necessarily learn skills like juggling or tree climbing, although that's what we've seen right now. But more importantly, we learn skills like patience and self-control and faithfulness and kindness and, and gentleness and, and service and loving our neighbor as ourself. And so if you've said yes to Jesus, you are part of the church and, and it's your job, it's your privilege, it's your goal, it's, it's your mission to learn those skills and then serve those around you as Jesus' hands and feet. If you're not yet part of the church, if you haven't yet said, yes to Jesus, I guess I'd ask, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for to say yes to a free gift of life change that would affect eternity? It's so good and it's so good to be on mission with Jesus. So, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a pause again. We're going to take a couple minutes and, and talk about two questions as a family, those questions are gonna, gonna come up on screen in just a second. But, but take this opportunity not just to talk about what it looks like to learn and to be around others in the church, not just what it looks like to live out the mission, but if you need to, take some time and talk about why 
and what it looks like just to follow Jesus. So let's take a break and the questions will be up on the screen. Hopefully that discussion went well and hopefully you guys are starting to chew on this big reality that when we make the decision and say yes to Jesus, um, it's not just a change that goes on in our eternal status, but it's also a change that happens right here and right now and what our responsibilities are. And God wants to use you in his church. Um, you don't have to be perfect. Uh, you don't have to have it all together. You don't have to know how to juggle. You can be learning, but learn alongside other people as you participate in what the church is all about. And here's the thing, families, there's so many opportunities to serve those around you uh, in these days. So consider looking for those opportunities. Consider as a family continuing to ask that question, what does it look like to serve as a part of the church during this season when we're staying at home, uh, but we have neighbors who might have needs, we have people in our community who might have needs. What does it look like to be serving as part of the church? So a couple of quick uh, reminders and encouragements. One, uh, be reading the Bible together. Woodlands in the Word is an awesome place to start. We're, we're sticking with Acts, and then wherever we go in Woodlands in the Word after that, if you want daily reminders and updates and help reading the Bible together as a family, um, text Bible Time to 715 204 4572. Again, 715, the number's up on the screen, you can see it, 204 4572, Bible Time. If you want regular updates and reminders about Woodlands Kids at Home, text at home to that same number. Easy peasy, uh, lemon squeezy. Next week, uh, we'll be doing the same time, same place. We're wrapping up this big question, what does it mean to be part of the church? And then as a way of an announcement, this is kind of cool, but uh, starting after that, our Woodlands Kids at Home content is going to dovetail and mesh with what we're talking about on Big Person Church on, on Sundays. So uh, whatever's being preached about in church on Sundays, Woodlands Kids at Home is gonna be about the same content, same topics, activities, engagement, discussion, all of that stuff will center around um, what we're talking about as a church. So. Stay in the word, keep connecting around Woodlands Kids at Home content, um, praying for you. If there's any way that I can continue to be praying for you, woodlandschurch.org slash kids. Submit your prayer requests there. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next week.